A little over a month ago, on a bit of a whim, I decided to pick up Normal People and I read it in about a day and a half. This book has won numerous awards and it was only published in 2018, so for it to have a film adaptation so soon after its publication can tell you something about its popularity. For those of you who have never heard of Normal People, the description of the novel can seem pretty underwhelming. The first half of the book follows two teenagers, Marianne and Connell, as they grow up and go to high school in a small northern Irish town. Connell is extremely popular, he's well liked by his classmates, and he's known for being a bit of a sportsman. Marianne is pretty much the polar opposite, she's considered an outcast and very weird, and they start up a secret sexual relationship with one another while in high school. And the second half of the novel follows the same two characters as both they and their relationships evolve while they go to college. From the outset, I can tell you that this book features a lot of common romance stereotypes. As you already heard from the description, we have the popular jock and the weird outsider girl. You have the secret relationship aspect, which has been seen multiple times in romances. And it's been said so many times before that it's not really the tropes that make a book bad, but instead how the tropes are handled and presented. Many of the best books that I have read have taken these tried and true familiar tropes and just tweaked them a little bit, made them a little bit different, and presented them as something completely new and fresh. And what Sally Rooney does so well is she doesn't allow any of her characters to just sit there and be one-dimensional and only fulfill the stereotype. She gives them complexity and flaws. She gives them humanity and that is what makes this story so worth telling and the reason it's connected with so many people. Connell consistently struggles with wanting to please other people and wanting everyone around him to like him. He cares so much about what people think of him that it stops him from going after what he really wants and being his true self. Growing up in a small town where everyone knows everyone, your reputation basically becomes your life. And so for Connell, his relationship with Mary Ann is like a threat to his identity and yet at the same time it's something that he desires so much. And then when Connell moves to a bigger city to go to college, he realizes that everything he sacrificed, this reputation, this identity that he so carefully constructed for himself, no longer has any meaning. And now it's Marianne who is thriving in this elite academic setting, not Connell. It's established at the start of the novel that she's weird. And it's not the cute, quirky weird that a lot of rom-coms will sort of assign to their female characters. Marianne is honestly a bit gross. There's one scene in particular that sticks out a lot to me and to so many people I'm sure who have read it, in which Marianne is sitting eating her lunch at school, she drops some yogurt on the front of her uniform, and then she picks it off with her spoon and eats it. And then Marianne goes to the bathroom, takes off her shirt in front of everyone, and rubs the yogurt off of her shirt, and this becomes a huge event at her school. Everyone's gossiping about it, everybody is talking about her. Marianne is in no way conventionally attractive. In fact, there are multiple points in which Connell is surprised and shocked at himself for even being attracted to her at all. Even when they're being intimate, immediately afterwards, he feels a little bit disgusted at himself for doing it, even though he enjoyed it and enjoys being with her. And from the very start of the novel, we understand that Marianne comes from a very abusive family. Her brother consistently mentally and physically abuses her, and her mother does nothing to stop it. She allows this to happen. And so for Marianne, when she goes to college, it's a chance for her to get away from that abusive dynamic, to get away from all of the labels that people place on her, and sort of reinvent herself. While reading through a couple negative reviews, I've noticed that for a lot of people, the two biggest downfalls of this book is the writing style and the miscommunication. Let's tackle the writing style first. You should know going into this that Sally Rooney does not use speech bubbles. But for me at least, I never found it difficult to distinguish who was speaking. Marianne and Connell have such distinctive voices, such distinctive ways of thinking, that it's almost impossible to get them confused. I would say that if the writing style and the format is what is scaring you off from reading this novel, pick up the audiobook. That's how I consumed the story. First of all, the audiobook narrators are absolutely incredible. Even if you've only read this book on the page, I highly, highly recommend the audiobook. And of course, having those two different narrators, one for Connell and one for Marianne, can definitely help you if you are having trouble distinguishing their voices. Sally Rooney's writing style is also very sparse. She doesn't have a lot of outrageously long descriptions. She's not going to wax poetic about how beautiful a tree looked as it gently swayed in the breeze. That's not the kind of writer that she is. And yet, even without those long flowery prose, I felt like her writing was so impactful and emotional. Now beyond the writing style, a lot of people have difficulties with the miscommunication that happens between Marianne and Connell. I will definitely say that I understand this. In romance novels, it has basically become a staple of the genre for miscommunication to happen between the main couple. And I know I have definitely been one of those people who have read a book and sat there and thought, if you had just told the person the truth, if you had communicated properly with your partner or whomever you're having an issue with, the last 50 to 100 pages of this book would not have happened.
happened. But as I said before, when it comes to romance stereotypes, Sally Rooney can portray them in a way that feels authentic and real and necessary. Miscommunication isn't just thrown into Marianne and Connell's relationship just for the heck of it to create some last minute problem at the end of the novel. It is a problem that they consistently have throughout their relationship. And Sally Rooney also gives us so much insight into Marianne and Connell as people that we understand perfectly why they are not communicating well with one another. The most obvious example of this is when they break up at one point during their time in college. Marianne and Connell have a legitimate relationship, they're seeing one another exclusively, and Connell has lost his job as a waiter, there's no way that he can make rent and he can't stay in the city for the summer any longer. Marianne has a fully furnished apartment that is paid for by her mother, and Connell is debating whether or not he wants to ask Marianne if he can stay there for the summer. Have you asked her about moving in yet? No. What is it exactly that's stopping you? Connell approaches Marianne and what could have been a, hey, can I stay with you this summer? Oh sure, I would love that, turns into them breaking up. Neither of them is actually saying what they want. Neither one is acknowledging how they truly feel. I was frustrated, yes, but I understood perfectly why it was happening. Class is such a huge part of not only this novel, but of Marianne and Connell's relationship. Connell comes from a single parent, working class background. Marianne, on the other hand, comes from a wealthier family and she has always had things provided to her. The job that Connell had as a waiter was a job that Marianne Marianne found for him through a friend of hers. And in Connell's mind, asking Marianne to stay with her over the summer feels impossible. And for Marianne, she has her own insecurities about the relationship that is based in the way that he treated her when they were in high school. She feels like, oh, he wants to move back home for the summer. Maybe he just doesn't want to be in this relationship. And in a way, she insinuates that they're going to be seeing other people and Connell, too embarrassed and anxious himself, agrees to that and they end up breaking up. And Marianne, because of her brother and her mother and the ways in which they have treated treated her, she feels fundamentally unlovable. And so if she even gets a hint that Connell doesn't want to be with her, she will believe that and thinks that he wants to break up with her when in fact that's the last thing that he wants. The reasons for the miscommunication between Connell and Marianne is twofold. One, they just don't know how to properly express themselves to the other person and they're afraid to. And two, probably the most harmful part is that they assume that the other person already understands them perfectly. They assume that the other person must know what they're feeling and feel the exact same way. See, I, I kind of hoped that I would have been able to stay here, that you would have let me. I don't really know what happened between us, to be honest. You said you wanted to see other people. I thought you were breaking up with me. You never said anything about wanting to stay here. To me, the story would not be as powerful. Marianne and Connell wouldn't be the characters that they were. Their relationship wouldn't be as impactful to the reader if that miscommunication wasn't there. Class is something that so subtly informs everything about Connell and Marianne's lives and their relationship. Another moment that sticks out to me so much is this scholarship that both Marianne and Connell apply for. Whichever college student wins this scholarship will have their entire room board tuition, everything covered for the rest of their time at this university. For Connell, this could make his entire life. This scholarship is a necessity. And so when he wins it, it's this huge relief for him. Whereas when Marianne wins her scholarship, she even says it herself. Winning the scholarship for her is not financially necessary. She doesn't care about having her entire tuition covered. What matters to her is simply the status of having won the scholarship. I think Connell as a character shines so much during those college years. Through him, we get to see the ways in which growing up can often lead to disappointment and dreams never quite working out the way that we thought that they would. As I mentioned before, Connell was the it guy in his high school. Everyone in his small town loved him. And yet when he goes to this bigger, more intimidating, more competitive environment, he loses himself. His reputation back home doesn't matter. The only friends he makes are through Marianne. Connell is an English major and he is constantly just so confused and has nothing to contribute to these class discussions because everybody is just talking over one another and arguing over literary devices and literary movements and he just has no idea what to contribute. Another part of Connell's story in college has to do with mental health. When Connell is in high school, there are a few inklings and hints dropped that he might have some kind of mental health issue. At some points he seems to be having what could be an anxiety attack, but it's never confirmed until he finally goes to college and is hit with a massive bout of depression and anxiety. One of the most impactful, most beautifully written chapters in this novel shows Connell going to talk with a mental health professional about his life, his anxiety, his depression, and when I say that this book is worth it just to read that scene, I absolutely mean it. In school I definitely felt that uh, feeling of isolation or whatever, but um, people seem to like me, everything, and um, uh, here I don't think that uh, people like me, 
that much. Never in my life have I ever read a novel that has candled mental health in such a delicate and truthful way, especially dealing with men's mental health. As previously discussed, Marianne comes from a very abusive family home. Her mother and her brother constantly made her feel like she was unlovable, unwanted. She was called weird by her classmates. She was often dehumanized by them. This affects her most acutely in her sexual and romantic relationships. Marianne, unfortunately, has no sense of self-worth or self-preservation. I'd have done it if you wanted to. You shouldn't do what you don't want to do. It's more that had you wanted to, I'd have enjoyed you wanting to. I like doing things for you. No, you, you can't do things that you don't want or, uh, or things you don't enjoy just to make me happy. But I like making you happy. She allows Connell to treat her poorly in that beginning high school portion of the novel. She allows him to keep their relationship secret and basically treat her as some dirty mistake because she is just so desperate for someone to show her love and affection. Later, when her and Connell grow up and she goes to college, she gets involved with a lot of relationships with men that are harmful. She dates a guy who will routinely hit her during sex. At one point, she goes on a study abroad trip and gets involved with a man who just has no concept of consent and doesn't care to ask for it. And it's always left ambiguous whether or not Marianne actually enjoys this type of rough sex or if she's only doing it because she doesn't know how to say no to people. Lines of pain and pleasure are constantly being blurred and any time that Marianne was having sex with other men, it just felt so uncomfortable and so anxiety inducing. After reading this book, I thought a lot about the title Normal people and what exactly that meant. When it comes to Connell, that title sort of makes sense. He wants nothing more than to be seen as normal. That's why he keeps his relationship with Mary Ann a secret. That's why he never actually voices an opinion on anything because he doesn't want anyone to know anything about him. He just wants them to like him and accept him. The entire novel, Connell is chasing this idea of normalcy and it's never actually achieved because everything that he experiences, even that sort of abnormal stuff, is normal. Their lives are extremely extraordinarily ordinary. Their insecurities, their struggles, their relationship, their trauma, and their mental health issues, all of it is normal. Everyone experiences those things. There's this amazing quote from Marianne, I can't remember it word for word, but I will put it up on the screen if I can find it, where she basically says that their relationship, their desire to belong to one another, everything about them and what they were to one another is normal. It's the normalcy of these people that makes them so incredibly fascinating to read about. So now I'm gonna talk a bit about the BBC and Hulu adaptation of this novel. There's not much I can say about this adaptation because it was basically word for word the book. The two actors who portrayed Marianne and Connell were absolutely brilliant. The chemistry between them was incredible. I think they did a particularly amazing job with the sex scenes. They are pretty graphic and very, very intimate. And there were some moments where I was looking at the screen and I was squirming because it feels like you're intruding on a very private moment. You almost want to look away and give them some privacy, which I think was just so, so amazingly done. I think anyone who was a huge fan of Sally Rooney's sparse writing style will probably enjoy this adaptation more because obviously you're seeing everything that's happening, you're seeing the characters and their emotional reactions to things. So in that sense, please, even if you didn't really enjoy the book, I highly, highly suggest that you check out the adaptation. It is beautifully crafted, wonderfully acted, and just an absolutely amazing, amazing, phenomenal adaptation. I really only have one gripe when it comes to this adaptation, and that is with Marianne as a character. I know, I know, I waxed poetic for like like however long about how amazing she is and what an incredible character she is. And a lot of my feelings can actually be summed up in this really incredibly written article about why Marianne is the worst part of normal people, the adaptation. I will link that article in the description below and I suggest that you read it. But essentially, I just feel like Marianne, the actress who played her, just wasn't how I envisioned her. Marianne is odd and weird and gross and she is absolutely not conventionally attractive in any sense. And so when you have an amazingly stunning woman like like Daisy Edgar Jones playing Marianne, it just feels like a little bit of a letdown. Now I enjoy seeing beautiful people on my screen as much as the next person. And I know that everyone's gonna say, well, it's Hollywood, it's TV, of course they're gonna pick beautiful people. But I just really feel like Marianne's plainness, her almost unattractiveness was something that was so important and vital to her as a person. And it wasn't just Marianne's overall attractiveness that I think wasn't quite right. It was the ways in which a lot of the things that she did in the novel that were considered gross 
else or weird or a little bit strange were made almost like quirky and cute and oh she's not like other girls in the adaptation. The article that I linked talked about that same moment that I brought up previously about the yogurt spilling on her shirt and they just didn't quite have the same punch and weight in the adaptation as it did in the book. In the book that's a really gross and weird moment and the entire school talks about it for weeks afterward. Like I'm sorry but no one is going to look at Daisy Edgar Jones even if she is in a school uniform with a plain braid and think oh that's not a stunningly amazingly attractive woman. Now all that being said I don't hate Daisy. I don't think that she did a bad job adapting Marianne. I just wish that they had gone a little bit harder and been a little bit more true to life as to how she looked and how she acted and carried herself especially during those years in high school. Overall though I have very very little to critique or complain about. The adaptation is I would say the best book to film or book to tv adaptation that I have ever seen. So there you have it my review slash analysis slash critique of normal people. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below. Let me know if you have read or watched normal people and what your thoughts were. All of my social media links can be found in the description below so go ahead and check those out if you would like and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!